to kick things off. If you do not know me, I'm Liz. I'm part of our community team here, and I'm joined by, so weird to call you by your full name, John Desborough, but does, did I say that right? I realize I don't even, yep. okay, yes. I did. I haven't said your last name in a long time, and that's because we call him Des. He is a uh, top contributor, I'd say, in our community, but basically like an honorary employee. I feel like at this point, he he does he does everything very well with Typeform, uh, and he's going to walk you through creating and sending custom reports from responses today. All that being said, um, we are recording this session, as you probably know from joining this, is on Zoom. So if you need to go back and revisit anything, just know that we'll send a link to that after this. Um, also on that note, we do love it when people are interactive because then it doesn't feel so lonely. So if you have questions or comments, feel free to pop them in the Q&A or in the uh, chat box. If you do have questions, please pop them in the Q&A if you can. Um, I'm going to let Des lead most of this, but or most all of this, uh, but I'm going to try to answer some questions as we go along. Uh, if there's any that I can't answer, it does can't answer, or we don't get time to to answer, um, pop by the community and we'll answer them in there. All that being said, uh, we'll try to get through as much as we can. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other housekeeping notes. Otherwise, I'll let Des introduce himself to you uh, and give a little bit of his background and kind of take it from there. Thanks, Liz. Um, just a note on the questions. We do have a Q&A session at the end of, end of this today. So... Um, Liz, will, as Liz said, she'll try to answer bits as she can throughout the session. I'll try to answer some of the questions at the end, depending on how long or how fast um, I can talk and cover everything else in here. Um, but just in terms of the uh, my background, um, I've been working with Typeform for a little over three years now, um, was invited to the beta of the community site to help uh, when they kicked off. And I thought it was great because I could ask all sorts of questions and get answers myself. And by doing that, and then I started to try to answer questions that people had dealing with logic and other things, because I kept learning all of these pieces. So I'm just trying to give a little bit back today by going through and trying to give a little bit of a response to folks on how to create and send custom reports out of the responses that you get in a PDF attached to an email. One of the things that I asked and tried to find out two, over two and a half years ago and have had uh, several answers in the community for that. And I'm old. Um, I've spent 45 years working uh, mostly as a management consultant and then learning how to use this tool in order to uh, uh, have fun and profit in the real world with using these tools to support the business that I do um, beyond this. So I drink a lot of coffee. Um, I have... I done a couple of presentations where we actually demonstrated a coffee slogan t-shirt business that I have as well. So that's why I'm the caffeinated curmudgeon. So quick agenda for the day, um, sort of introduction of what we're going to cover, the scope and examples, because there's some things that are in scope, some things that are out. What tools do I use and what are the simplest ones I think that people can use? The basic process um, we'll run through a simple example, creating a certificate. So if you're a coach or you um, run any sort of a program where you want to give somebody a certificate at the end of the process, a way to do that and get it back in there. A medium complexity example where we're going to take um, and use a single template. And then based on the scores that people have in the quiz, being able to go through, do a lookup and pull back some text and um, images that are appropriate to that so that you can customize. And I use that in quotes, um, pardon my air quote thing, um, but use that as a way to go through and customize a report. So rather than having a static report for each of the outcomes that you want, you could create a lookup to be able to deliver something back that's based on the user's piece. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a Q&A session with coffee. Um, so that's what we're headed to go through and do. So um, I apologize if I speak fast. If you're watching this in a replay, do not put it on a one and a quarter speed to get through it more quickly because I will sound like a chipmunk. Um, so first session, um, intro and scope. So I'm going to try to show you how to create the customized PDF file to send back to respondents. We'll focus on merging response data with one template. 
Okay, so we, we'll look at how we create the template. We'll customize the report based on what the uh, respondent has done using some simple lookups. And I'll go over the basics of using the Google Sheets array formula function because that's one of the key things that uh, I use um, and is a simple way to pull data into the uh, into the reports as you'll see through the process. Um, but there are some things that I won't cover today, and this won't be dynamically updated charts and graphs. So I wanted to originally create a spider chart or a radar chart based on the results so you could show and move that. One of the problems or one of the issues is that it is very difficult to go through in a static template um, in a Google Sheet or Google Slide to be able to update the underlying data behind that and then generate the revised image to go out in there. So I'm working with the uh, vendor of the software that we're going to cover in a little bit and with Google to try to get that done, but it's not there yet. But um, there's a couple of simple things you can do, um, and I'll show an example of that shortly. Um, and I will not cover the advanced and esoteric Google Sheets functions that are in there um, if you need to pull data from a variety of different templates and do a bunch of um, if statements. There are um, many times where you have to go through and understand how Google Sheets and the functions work inside. Um, I'll cover some of the basics and where to go through. I will provide um, as part of the output from this, the two um, array formula um, functions that I use just to show an example of how you can do this. But it, you know, and this workshop isn't going to make you an expert overnight. Um, I'm still not an expert in it. I keep learning new things about it, but it will help you move the needle forward. So I apologize if you know, you're looking to become a, the absolute whiz. Um, you know, if you're a, a Google Sheets whiz, you'll have a much better chance than I ever will of, of doing that. So what we're going to go through and do is show a couple of examples. And this is a certificate. Um, I have a type form on how to create this inside the community. Um, you can find that link through there in a post, and that's one of the ones that um, we'll have either at the end of this particular session or we'll put up uh, in the uh, community post afterwards. But um, this is an example um, that is there. You can find it. You can try it out in the community. But it's also for a challenge. I actually did run a three-day type form challenge, how to create your first type, type form, how to create um, link it to uh, ConvertKit and how to send follow-up email. So in that process, um, when people did that, I generated this particular form. So I've used it in an example. Okay, um, For one of my clients, um, a service-oriented group called Service Academy, um, we took a six-part type, a six-type form self-awareness profile um, for students, um, and we basically pulled it together for their superpower field guide. And so after answering all of these six different type forms, we assembled based on score into things, um, this profile like this grid you're seeing on the right-hand side. And so you, you can dynamically populate whether they scored enough in these individual sessions to be able to go through and do that. So this is one of the types of complexity pieces that we'll talk about uh, later on. And here's another one that has a, a bit of a it looks like there is a, a graph in here based on the scores that people had created, but this was a profile for student athletes. What we actually did and we, is we created a whole series of images, um, some a score from 1 to 20 for each one, and we do a lookup and pull in the appropriate one. So it looks like a graph. It met the needs for the client, but it does give you um, a semblance of thinking there might be a graph behind this. But Simple things that you can do to do a lookup, and we'll actually explore doing one like this in the session today. Okay, so that's really what we're going to go through and some of the examples that you can do with these. Um, and I'll cover off these tools in addition to Typeform, Google Sheets, which is where we connect Typeform to, um, Docs and Slides, and Document Studio from a company called Digital Inspiration. It is an add-in for Google Sheets. Um, the uh, I use the enterprise version. Um, of that tool, it's $100 a year for that, and that will generate an, um, up to 2,000 reports a day at the moment. So that is that works just fine for my, the purposes that I have across the uh, the forms that go out from my end. Um, I'll, I'm not going to differentiate between what their free version, their medium version, and their enterprise version is. I'm just going to focus on the enterprise version for that, um, and so that we can go through and follow the examples of how to build this out. Okay, so those are the tools I'm going to cover. And then I'm going to walk through the basic process 
of what we're going to go through and do. Okay, and then the process is a very simple thing. You create the out, output template that you want. Okay, we're going to go through and we'll look at that in a second uh, on the examples of how simple it is to create an output template. Then you connect your type form to Google Sheets. You configure the sheets so that you can set it up to pull the data into the form a little bit easier. I'll explain that as we go through the example. And then use Document Studio to merge the data into the target template, create the PDF, and email it out. Um, I use Google. Um, there are other email systems that you can use to send it out, but that's what we're going to go through and do. So template, the type form to Google Sheets, configure your sheets so that you can have um, a reporting tab, if you will, and then Document Studio. That's what I'm going to walk through, and it should be fairly straightforward for people to follow. Okay? Now, we're going to go through this first one and walk through this certificate example um, in terms of doing this particular part. Um, in terms of doing it with Excel, um, you can do this with Excel. It does connect to Excel, but the add-in that you might have to use will be uh, will be different and not the Document Studio. Um, it'll be a different tool for that one. Okay, so just I saw that out of the corner of my eye. So we'll we'll go through. So now I'm going to grind this out and pardon that almost uh, coffee pun. So I'm just going to drop this down for a second. And we're going to start by looking at the type form, um, just as an example. And hopefully, this will show up fine for people um, in the uh, in the system. So this is my very simple um, the uh, certificate piece that I'm looking at. And all I have in here is a list of courses. Um, you can do this with any of yours. You create the course, have them choose the course. Um, I ask people for their first name. And then I send their certificate out to them at the email address that they put in. That's all fairly straightforward and simple. Um, and then I have my ending page. Um, and check your email shortly. It may take up to an hour to process and send your certificate to you. I'll explain a little bit more about that part when I get to the uh, to the studio, a document studio piece. So just so that people are aware. Um, in terms of if you've not connected it to Google Sheets, um, you can choose the connect button here. Um, and then there is an option that you can connect it. You'll see that I've already connected it to the Google Sheet, but the simple process of doing it, you would connect, click the connect button. It asks you which Google account you want to use. You select the Google account. It asks you for a um, a name of a new form, a create new or an existing. You can create the new form, fill in the details, and it will go through and allow you to put that information in and get to the points, okay? Now, this one's already connected. I've opened up the connection here at the top, and you can see that we have the three columns here. I'll make this one bigger so you can... Okay, you're going to do that. I what course did you complete? Who are you going to, you know, what's your name and then the email address. So these become very, you know, long and cumbersome to use and then I will talk about why I said we're going to create a um a a reporting tab there in a brief second. But we're going to take this information and we're going to merge it with this Google slide. It's a very simple slide. OK, now you'll note here that I have a very straightforward um, slide. I have some items that are in the curly brackets and these brace brackets. This is how we create a marker inside the form in order to merge the data from the Google Sheet, pardon my brain fart for a second there, the Google Sheet into this particular template. So we've got name and course are the two fields that are going to show up here. Okay, now that's very simple in terms of the nomenclature of what I have to put inside these so that Document Studio can do the merge. But if I go to my database, I have these wonderful things of these long field names. So all I'm going to go through and do is go over here to this particular sheet. And I'm going to call this um, course. I'm going to call this name. I'm going to call this email. Very simple pieces to go through and do. And I am going to go through and grab this one little file and take it out of the way here for a second, if it will let me. 
because I can copy and paste and make this work really well. Now, um, what I want to go through and do for this, and I'm going to create this, I'm going to call this my reporting tab. Okay? And I always create a report tab so that I can do this, keep it separate from the information that Typeform is dumping into the sheet. So for the reports, I've changed the names, course, name, email. They match name and course here on the certificate. That's what I want to fill in. So all I need to do now is I need to use the, the array formula function. And what it's going to do is I simply go over here and I point to the field that I want. And I'm going to cheat because it's going to come back here for a second. I actually want column A. It just overwrites it. So I want column A. Did I put an A in there? I Let me just do it in caps. A2. Now, um, I have the, uh, the formula there. It starts in A2. If I tell it to go through and start with that, I also need to tell it to go all the way down column A whenever we have information coming in. And so now when I hit the enter key, you'll notice that it pulls the information up. So that's the formula. Um, and it's very simple, array formula. I point to the tab. What cell range do I want? So I'm looking at a range. It will pull down every time a new entry is made on this main page it's going to pull that in. The reason we use array formula and not copy is because the copy formula will work one time, but we want this to work dynamically every time a new one is added. Now, it's very simple. I want to pull the names and emails. Um, I can literally go through and copy this formula across. Okay, now I have the details that I need. I'm going to take the course name, my name, and the email address, merge them together, into this particular template and send it out. So I've already installed the Document Studio um, extension, uh, the add-on, so it's under extensions, Document Studio. I'm gonna open it up. And it, this, is a, this is a very simple tool to go through and make work to do all of this. So as it's loading and loading and loading, um, I would do interpretive dance, but Liz forbid me from doing that. Um, now, very simple. I'm going to create a workflow. And what am I going to call this workflow? And I'm going to call this the Simply September Webinar Certificate. Okay. It's already connected to a data source. Um, the worksheet, in this worksheet, I want it onto the report tab. And that is what I want to connect. That's the source of my data. I continue, okay? I want to process all rows as they come in. Um, I, could and I could specify that I only want to send out four rows where the, if I had country, where country is UK or, in, or Spain. You could do that and set these up in terms of conditions. Now, what I want to do first is I want to create a file. You'll notice there are a number of tasks that you can do. I'm going to create a file. I'm going to choose a template, and in this case, I'm going to search for presentations, and I'm going to look for, I'm going to search for student certificate. Okay, so there's my template. I select it. Done. Yay, I now have that template that we looked at. Now, where am I going to save these? Um, I can pick a Google Drive folder. And this is a very simple piece to do. And I am just going to put this into, oh, where am I going to, where should I put it? I'll just put it into the Sunday crew for the moment. Specify where it's going to go. Is it a subfolder path? What is the output name? You know, your course certificate is the name of the file. It's the PDF format. And I want to allow people to be able to copy or download the file. That's great. Send a notification, sharing the file with the users. Yes. Okay. So that's very simple. Let's preview what that looks like. 
and see how it looks when we go through. So it's pulling up some sample data and I'm going to test the task and it should show me that form um, in a second with the data from row two. And view the certificate. So this should show me in a moment. There you go. Des, I completed the seven you know, seven day type form. Now I've created a custom certificate. Very simple to go through and to do. Now that's good. I've got that set up. Now what I want to do is I want to progress to the next step. What is adding another task? My other task is I want to send it as an email. Okay, I'm going to choose my email provider. My email provider is Gmail. My sender name, Des. If I could type correctly, it would be Des today. I'm coming from my email address. Um, I can BCC. I typically BCC myself on these just so that I can have it coming to me. My email column, who is it going to? I'm sending it to the email address. Email, you know, here's your course certificate. Okay. Yeah. Congrats. Um, and I can go name. And let me spell that correctly. This is live. You can tell. Um, congrats name. And then I can attach the file, the merged file, and generate it. Let's preview it. Um, test the task. Now, it's going to send this to me in an email. And I want it to show me that email. Do, 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 do. So you'll see all of my email showing up here briefly in a second when it comes to it. There's my certificate right there. Congrats, Des. Now, it's a test. It hasn't attached it, but that was a test of that particular piece. So we know that it is there. Okay. That's good. Now, let's continue. Sending services, Gmail. We've got the message done. Okay, we're good here. Now, the next part is to go through and save this. But what we need to go through and do is to tell it when we want it to run. Um, I tend to send it off to go through and run the workflow every hour. This means that every hour it will go through, process it, and send them out in a batch. Very simple. Um, running it on the form submit, I have had difficulty. It works really well with the Google form, but it doesn't work so well with the type form coming in. You can try it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So there we go through on the, uh, you know, in terms of skipping in these files. So it's saved. I'm going to save and run it just so that we can get it to go through and send the email. And so we should have this showing up when it's done, connecting to Google Sheets, run the workflow. So the um, in terms of sending it out, what happens is that all of the new emails uh, that have, all of the new forms that have come in as it's processing the, the cycle, let's just say it started processing at uh, 12 noon Eastern time. Anything that was there and needed to be processed, it would send them out right away. Um, anything that came in after it finished processing the current list, it would turn around and it would send it out um, at the next time it started to process. So if somebody entered it in at um, 1258 and it was set to run at one, it would continue to run at that point in time. OK, so you'll see that it has processed the two rows, um, the row quota. You can see that it's done that part. It is all set and done. And that is how it works. Now, all I need to do is to go to my email screen and let me grab the email. Uh, when it's processed, when it's processed. Sorry if I'm looking over to this other screen. I'm just looking to get these things updated. Um, and let me do that. And let me just grab that and bring it across. So there you go. Is This is the certificate that was done. There it is created, and it's done. So that was all said and done and sent out on, under that little time span.
Okay. So very quick, very simple to go through and create um, all of those details out of using document document studio in that particular session. Okay. So we've got that workflow. It's done. You can go back into it. You can edit it um, and make it make changes to it, but you can have all of this control on it. So that's the basics of how we go through and do that. Okay. So we started with a form, um, a template, our type forms fits data. We have this certificate and we create it and we were walking through at that point. Now, I'm going to move over to the more complex example, okay? And I'm going to give you a bit of a more of a challenge that, uh, to look at, but let's look here what we see in this form in this spreadsheet just before I go. You can see that it's got the certificate in these columns that were created by Document Studio. It has the studio file link and it has the email sent. So it's gone out to those particular email addresses. So this tells you when you go back to look at it, you can see all that information. Now, um, I'm going over to this other form. This is a more complex form. There is a version of this form that is in the community on a data quality assessment where we're looking at people, processes, and technologies. The, the type form itself has three question groups where we have three questions coming in for each based on the scores for each section, we total it up and we route people to one of four um, statement pages where we have a healthy, um, stable, serious, and critical setup in the form. We then ask people um, you know, if they want to go through uh, and for an industry sector. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But then we say, do you want to give us, would you like a copy of the report? Here's the you know here's the report. Give us your email address, and you can get this output. Okay, so not just inside this particular form. Give them some value at this point. In our purpose, we want to try to get them to come back and engage with us. So we want to send them and send it to them in an email and to capture that. So here is part of the output file that is created in the larger piece inside the um, the type form that is in the community at this point. Um, we basically, there's the cover page. Um, we have this maturity model. And the last page um, of this particular form for the users is where we pull in some information based on the score that they have. So based on then whether they are serious, critical, um, healthy, et cetera, we want that information to come in based on score. We have some descriptive paragraph that we want people to see based on their score. And we have a static image that we're gonna call in based on their score. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for us folks. Um, if you're doing a personality profile and you're looking at um, the uh, sort of Myers-Briggs, um, you know, where do I score? I'm an INTJ, um, that is me personally, but I'm an, you know, an, an ENTP uh, for work. Um, I have to be an extrovert for work, but you could have what is your personality type. You could have a description and you could have a picture of an INTJ, which could be um, the uh, you know, Darth Sidious over here from Star Wars piece. Let's take a look at the, um, the data that we have for this. Um, inside the, the form, the questions that I have in the form are very long. So you can see here, it says who owns the data in your organization. Um, you know, over here, it's very long. Again, what I want to go through and do, I want to make it simple to merge these items into the, into the form. So I have sitting here, um, you know, I have pulled all of these fields across. Okay. You'll notice that I use that very simple array formula type scenario. Look up over here on this tab, pull in the information. That brings in all of these areas up here to the score. Okay. Now, what we're going to focus on over here inside this sheet is how do we get through to the level? Okay. Now, I know that this is going to look um, a little bit blurry to everybody, um, but let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger in terms of 
size for people. Does that make it easier to see if somebody could give me a thumbs up in the uh, in the chat just so I can see that part? Okay. Um, all right. So again, you'll notice that it is an array formula. Okay. Now um, I'm going to start with this particular part that over here, very simple. I'm looking up data, pulling it in from the other side. Same with the score. Okay. The calculation for the score is done on the other tab. I'm bringing it here. Now what I want to go through and do is that I, I'm going to, based on these scores, I'm going to look up some information from this levels detail tab. And if you score um, if you're le if you score in a range where your level is healthy, I will pick up the header, the description, and the image file that is associated with that particular score. Now, these images are stored in a Google Drive. They need to be in a Google Drive area or another space where you can actually put the link and pull them in dynamically. So these are static images. This is static text in column B. But for the user, pulling it into the report is going to be a bit of what I would call dynamic or customized based on the score. So let's go back to this particular array formula. Um, because we are doing um, it based on the score, let me start by going through and just walking through the start of the um, this if statement. Okay, If column N is blank, Okay, in this range. So if this range here for the score has a blank value in the cell, then display it as a blank. Okay. Otherwise, if I don't put that in, it's going to populate a number all the way down or error messages all the way down that it doesn't have a value and it's going to cause a piece. So very simple just to keep that and just keep the spreadsheet neat. Um, if there is a value in there, then let's start the evaluation. If the score in column N in the range, so you'll note that it is using the range in here, okay? If the range, the score in this range is, you know, less than or equal to 12, then go over here to the level details tab to A5 and get the data, okay, to show in the level header. Um, if it's greater than 12, and it's less than or equal to 20, go over to A4 and get the header. Otherwise, go to the next one until the last part is if it doesn't match any of those, throw up an error message. That's just to me at this point in time. Now, one of the things that you is any ex mathematics type or logic expression, you will, when you're creating these things, you'll always run into issues around the number of brackets that you have to make certain that it closes all these things down. Don't worry about it. It's fairly simple to troubleshoot these things. Um, this will give you a copy of this particular formula so you can see what it looks like and you can start by you know, looking at this if you have a score that you want to evaluate. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward to go through and do that. So all we're doing is doing a lookup in this case to these other areas. So look up this part, look up the text, find the image. Okay, so that would... So that means that for each of these scores, we would have a different set, a new set of data coming in. Fair enough. Now, we want to go through and we want to do that wonderful little bit on this report tab with our good friends um, of Document Studio. Okay, again, I'm going to walk through this fairly quickly um, to go through the same process to go through and do this. So it's the second time going through and repeating it. This part should be fairly easy to, um, to remember this in terms of setting it up. We're going to create the workflow. What am I going to call this? Um, I'm going to call this September webinar uh, DQ just for data quality. I have those. That's the, the information I need on this tab. I want to process all the rows. I'm going to create the file, the template. I'm going to choose. And again, it's presentation and DQ sample for webinar. It's already here in the list. Select that one. Um, where am I going to save it? Um, the one thing you do need to do in this version is that you do need to go through. I better not put it in that one. My apologies. 
where did I put it before? Way down here in Sunday Crew. Okay. Um, and I'm going to call this the um, DQ webinar output. Pardon my fat fingering on the typing as we go through this PDF file. Um, I have allow collaborators and send. I'm done. So I have now gone through and I have created my PDF file. It's done the merge. I'm going to add another task. I'm going to send the email, go to Gmail, um, and sender's name, Des. I will just use email in this case. I'm not going to bother to BCC myself. Um, but the subject is DQ webinar report. I'm getting better at typing it. Okay. Um, yeah. Here you go. It tells me I've attached the, I got it attached. Um, it is done. So now I have all of this set up. I've got four rows of data sitting in this particular piece. They all go back to my email address. So I'm fairly confident and safe that I can go through and send all this. I want to run this every hour. I'll save it. And it's going to tell me save and run. I'll just run it again. So very simply to go through and do this, it'll process the four. Now I select, because I ran it now as well in the save and run, it's going to process any of the existing entries and put that into the system um, to go through and do that. In the background on the screen, you can see that it started to create the document studio files. I want it to run the workflow and it should go through and it should do that. Okay. Now, um, I, I currently run two versions, uh, two uh, instances of the uh, Document Studio, uh, two different licenses at that point. And I send out through there about 1,800 reports a day um, through these other parts. There are about 40 or 50 um, a week that go out from the community for the, the various samples that are in there at this point in time. So they are in existence, they are out there, so you can test them out and see what it looks like. So while this is waiting to run through, and I apologize for the, uh, the slow time on this piece, um, the, uh, and, uh, and I'm being told that I'm running over, I guess I'm not speaking as fast as I would normally go through and do. I apologize. But in terms of going through the process, it should all be a very simple piece to get. Um, Let's go over. It's connecting back to the sheets. Let's go and find my email. Okay, where is my email hiding again? My apologies. I just need to find my email. Do -do -do. Let me get my email back so that we can see where it sits. Find it in the email and bring it across. Okay, here we go. Let me open it up. Right, there we go. There's a version of it. It has come in. There's one attachment. Here I go. What did it come up? So it said that I was stable, and it pulled in that particular type of report. So this is a quick way to go through and create these items to give you the details that you have. Okay, so... It's not completely dynamic. I have static information. I'm pulling in some, te some text and some images that are based on the user's input. And that's the part to me that allows me to go through and make it customized. So those are the simple ways to go through and do this using the very simple parts. Now, I am gonna try to come back um, and bring back, this is where I, I'm just trying to find where I hid the uh, the slides. Um, this is th this is where we get into this real things on the technology side of the house um, in terms of finding where I put my where I put all of those slides before. Um, that's the webinar. I don't need that one. So the um, allow me just to get back to sharing my slides. There's the certificate. That's the first one that we did. We looked at this medium complexity example. So on your input, 
it was stable. You saw text and image. We pulled that in. Okay. So a very simple way to use these tools to do that. That was the end. Now it's turned to wrap it up. Um, and so in terms of wrapping it up, um, before we go to the Q&A, um, Google Sheets, connect to it. Okay. I always recommend people connect to Google Sheets simply because it gives you a backup of your data, not just in the type form. It gives you a backup. Um, create a reporting tab. Use the array formula functions to pull the information in. You can change the headers from the long question names to shorter pieces to pull into the templates. Slides, docs, easy to use. Excuse me. Document Studio. Um, nice little tool uh, to go through and generate and create these. Um, and then from the enterprise version, it allows me to send out to 2,000 reports a day. Very easy in terms of the builder to create the series of tasks to go through. So lots of stuff that you could do at that point. So there should be enough in there to give you a starting point, a little bit of complexity, and there's some other larger pieces you can do, but we can try to cover those off if you've got some questions. So over to you, Liz, on questions. Oh, there are questions, and I may have, um, you know, requested from everyone that you do an interpretive dance. So I'm just saying, but questions first. <laughs> this is what okay. I know you all really came for this. Uh, first question it, from Valeria is every hour only sending only send the email to the new email added. So basically, I think it's every hour. Does it only give you the option to do it every hour? No. Um Every every hour is the sort of the default that I would suggest that you send it. Um, the again, depending on uh, you can do it on submit. There is an option to do it when the form is submitted. It that form when the form is submitted works really well if you're using a Google form into the Google Sheet in order to send it. Okay, it doesn't. Um, I found that if you have more if you have more than five forms um, that are submitted at the same time. So if you had a class of 30 and you were asking them to all submit right now, um, it would, it would yak um, on the, on submit. Okay. It just, it can't process it. Um, so run it every hour. People are going to submit these um, and it'll either be a minute um, or it could be 59 minutes. Just let people know in the expectation that it could take a while. Okay? Check shortly, you know, check spam, check otherwise, it'll get there. Um, it's actually a pretty good service. Perfect. Uh, and then Kelly asks, I wonder if you can set up more than one report sheet and pull them all into one document to send out at the end. Um, so if you want one report, um, if you have one report that you're sending out, then my suggestion is, that, so if you recall back, there was um, an image for a, uh, the uh, superpower field guide with all the superheroes on it. There were six type forms that were pulling in. There were separate Google Sheets. Um, all of those were done to pull it into the reporting tab for that one is to pull all the data necessary for the final report into one wrap up. Um, spreadsheet and then the reporting was done out of there um having multiple you can run multiple reports out of the same um spreadsheet on a different on different tabs but it runs into a conflict if you try to run uh two reports two workflows on the same tab okay so i um, recommend if you can try to keep them on in separate files not on in you can do it on separate tabs but on separate files is better that way you can actually manage your brain um, much easier. The seven voices in my head find it much easier to do it that way. Oh, goodness. Um, Alexander asks, why do you use Document Studio? Do you see any advantages over other applications such as Make or Zapier? That's a good question. Well, Make or Zapier are more um, integration tools. They allow you to move data in and around in between. I'm, I was trying to find something that was very simple. Um, we can all have free Google setups. And for $100 um, for a year, uh, for an enterprise version of Document Studio, it gives me a very nice, cheap way to go through and create these. Um, simplest way of trying to go through and do this as cheap and, ineffect and effectively as possible. 
Um, I don't want to get into explaining OCAM's razor too much, but often the simplest solution is the right one. Um, and so that for me, it was Google Sheets. What's an add-in for Google Sheets? And away you go. Nothing against Zapier and Make, but I prefer the simplest. There is one other question uh, from Cameron. For complex reporting slash projects, are you available for consulting, Des? Um, so there are there are two parts to it. One, um, yes, I do consulting both in type form, mostly in type form. A lot of the complexity that I've had requests for for people who've tried to go through and look at this, um, they it's more Google Sheets and it's more getting the data, massaging the data with formulas to go through and work on that particular piece. Um, I do not profess to be a Google Sheets expert. Um, I've learned it all on just the way that I need to be able to do it for what I need. Um, if you need um, two parts to look at it, one, look, if it's a Google Sheet assembly of data, getting it into the right pieces, find a Google Sheets expert for that. If you need some help from the Typeform side, um, then I am, uh, you know, I do uh, work on that particular space, can work on generating these simple pieces, but um, I will just put it out there at the moment. I am tied up um, um, until at this point through to the end of November with various pieces. Um, I have no more room in my book to do that at this point. Um, and I keep getting requests and I have to keep telling people I have project books. So, uh, but yes, uh, technically Cameron, yes, I am. Um, actually, not probably until the new year. So. Maybe you should just clone yourself, Des. I, simple solution. I, I, I've on. tried that. I've tried that, but it scared people. Yeah, I can see that. It's a lot of interpretive dancing. Uh, 14 voices inside of two heads. No, no. Too many voices for me. Yeah. Um, Stefano asks, can we create a report merging in PDF files? For example, collecting type form answers about your favorite food. I'll create a recipe book where every recipe is a PDF. That's cute. Um, you can. Um, so if you think about the um, the ability to do that, um, if you have the links to the PDFs, okay, um, if you think about that page where I had the uh, the dynamic text, okay, um, and you have um, if you you know, the, you want um, sort of a Thanksgiving recipe book and you've got that tag, you could go through and do that. You could basically go through and pull in the links. So for the various PDFs and add them into your Google slide or your Google doc, I would use a doc at that point. And then when it prints out, it will actually go through and it will bring it in. It sounds silly, but it does. So you can go through and do that. Um, it does require a little bit of work in the back end to do that. But again, um, that's up to you to figure out some of the details within docs to be able to to do that, but you can pull uh, the pieces together to do that. Uh, Kelly also mentioned any array images formulas would be mega helpful. So just throwing that out there. Yeah. So the, the, the simple ones that were that we use to look up and just pull the, the data in, um, we'll make those available. Um, I have the uh, that larger one that had the um, evaluation of categories, category, if, if not this category, then is it this category? Is it this category? Is this category for the lookup? We'll, we'll put that and we'll post that as part of a link inside of the community page as one of the resources. Um, I'll have a little um, document that people can get at. So it'll have those as a sample to use. Um, and then the uh, there are some things that you can do that are are kind of fun uh, going into an extension space. So um, I will just digress for 30 seconds, Liz. If you think of that data quality piece, I did have in the questionnaire, in the quiz, there was a, what industry are you in? So if somebody identified, and I'll use James uh, from Typeform, if he identified that he was in the education space, um, all of the data that he would enter would also go into a series of tabs that I have that deal with the industry. So it would add a count of one to the number of industry respondents for education, put his scores in there, and then it runs a macro to go through and generate the uh, average scores for all of those the participants in that industry. And then in the larger form, it replaces it, puts it back. So you can do some very complex things inside of Google Sheets 
to bring the data back into the system. So if you want a running total or a running average score, um, you can do it. It's much easier to do on an N minus one, if you will. So if James did it last and then Liz does it now, she would see the results from James included, but not hers. So that's what I would call N minus one count, but very simple to go through and add all that complexity in. So um, I was able to go through and do that for part of this data quality work that I and research I do off on the side. Um, so not more lookups. <laughs> Fancy. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions? I don't see anything else in the Q&A, but before, I'll give it like two seconds before we move into next steps. This is your time to do another interpretive dance very quickly, Des. Well, with that dance, we might as well go into next steps. <laughs> First, thank you all for joining and helping me get this dancing and obviously sharing his solutions. Uh, it's always great to have, have him live and it's also great to, to hang out with all of you and see your questions and um, yeah, just, just do things sort of live. Uh, for next steps, um, you'll be able to watch the replay of this. Give us like a day to put it up at the link. Um, if you haven't already, if you would like uh, more solutions or wanna see past solutions from Des, um, Please join our community. I'm also there, but I do not do as well with array formulas as Devs does. So I'm gonna step down on there. Yeah, that too, that too. Or anything. I mean, I'm I'm just here for fun. Um, if you have a moment, please tell us what you thought about this in the feedback survey. Uh, we do, I do personally read all those and it's really helpful and lets us know what you're looking for next. And we should also have more workshops soon. So keep an eye on the community. Again, a small plug, but if you want to hang out with us, I mean, we're pretty decent people, but otherwise, I think that is all we have. Thank you, Des, for hanging out with, with all of us and me. Um, yeah, that's it. I think I think oh, that's it. I, I would only add one more plug for the yes. community in there. And um, I use the community extensively to learn how to do things better with Typeform um, and discover trying to find solve logic problems for people is a lot of fun. Um, sometimes it's at three o'clock in the morning when I get a chance to look at it, but I would recommend that if you are in the community and you come up with a, an, a solution to something and doing something like this, sharing what you know, um, is something that you would like to do touch base with Liz, um, in the community, let her know at that point that you would like to do something and make a presentation. The, uh, the folks from Typeform, um, are very good at, uh, encouraging uh, engagement and participation and so we just need to get some more folks in there so uh, you'll see james who's on the in the background today and liz um, are in there and uh it, it's a it's a wonderful place to find some answers can't answer all the things in there for you because it's not the it's not the support center but we can help out as best we can if anything there's a thread for dad jokes so if you got no questions we've got jokes so <laughs> with that i uh think we are good to end it I'm, I'm originally from minnesota so i'll do a minnesota goodbye i don't know how to say goodbye so i think that's all thank you all